Hi everybody and welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to watercolor a uh, macaw. Macau. <laughs> it's a it's a parrot. And what I have here is the rigger. And the rigger is a uh, a very very nice uh, pencil or a brush. A brush and um, it has very very long hairs. So uh, the reason for that is that because of the long hairs, this brush can contain uh, a lot more water than the shorter one would. And I'm using the rigger for setting up my uh, first sketch of this beautiful bird. And it's going to be a very uh, action uh, full uh, painting. Now here's the nose entrance and as you can see you can, uh, well, the, the, the way that the, the rigger is uh, going around with the pigments of the watercolor, it stretches quite far. And of course you can also choose to do the setup with the graphite pencil, but I simply chose to uh, do it directly with the rigger. Now this is my other brush, this is uh, the number 20, it's a Da Vinci, it's a flat brush. And what I do next is I go around the, the bird and um, I'm wetting up the paper. I'm going very carefully around uh, the whole of the bird. Now what I want to do, and I was uh, telling you in the uh, in the first uh, few words that I want to put in as much as action as possible. Now uh, this parrot, the Macau, um, has two kinds of colors. It's the blue and it's the yellow. And for the back I'm also using uh, the round brush, it's the number 12, also a uh, Da Vinci. Uh, so I, I actually just use the, the three brushes. So that's the rigger, it's the round brush number 12 and the flat brush number 20. Now for the left and the right side I put in the red, a little bit of yellow and some blue. And the real-time tutorial can be found on my Patreon page. So if you want to see the reference pictures and you want to see me do this in real time, it took me one and a half hour and you can find this on my Patreon page of course. So maybe if you're interested you can find me there and also more than a hundred other tutorials all in real time. Now here I'm applying uh, the blue and uh, also a little bit of green and as you can see on the left side I'm having my cold colors and on the right side or bottom part uh, I'm using the, uh, I've placed the uh, warmer colors. Now the front of the head is uh, seemingly a little bit more greenish, while the rest of the head is uh, in the blue. And I'm using a simple uh, blue, just uh, ultramar ultramarine blue, uh, combined with a little bit of, uh, let's see what that is. I have the ultramarine, and this other one is the cobalt, cobalt blue. And this is my pine gray. So uh, within all of this painting, I'm not using any black. The darkest color on my palette is pine's gray. And I use this like it is a black. I think uh, pure black is very hard on my uh, uh, for a special effect, so that is why I'm using this pine this gray. And that's for the beak, of course. The beak is slightly opened, so I'm trying to uh, get that in the picture. 
and the back of uh, the Macau is quite dark and here I'm letting it flow into the background and just see what I want to do with that I want to do a lot of splashing at the end so I think I'm thinking of doing this part really dark so I can go in later on with uh, some of the white. I will demonstrate this for you. Now for the part of the body and the side of the head, uh, the, the Macau is yellowish, but within that yellow there's also a lot of uh, orange and there's a little bit of red and I also want to create some feel of feathers going on so my first under layer is just simply a, a mixture of a little bit of yellow and yellow ochre and a little bit of uh, cadmium red and here on the far end you can just see the left wing so I'm using the, uh, the blue again. Well, it's more of a Prussian blue, Prussian blue, uh, but it, that's very dark indeed. So this is where I'm demonstrating my first gouache. If you think you are going in too dark, you can always apply a little bit of the gouache paint can see it here and in that way I am brightening up the pigments within that watercolor there now the top of the head can be a little bit bigger so here I am using the rigger again and I want also to the the feathers to, to pop out a little bit because this is uh, going to be an action painting a lot of action going on, a lot of uh, splashes and splattering of pigments. So this will uh, do good, do my drawing good. And here on the bottom part, I'm also applying a little bit of the burnt sienna, making uh, the lower part of my painting much darker than uh, the upper part but for the upper part I will also apply later on a little bit of splashy effects now the right bottom part should be really really dark because I want to create a little bit of a jungle effect and uh, I do not want this bird to be caged I want it to be free and that is why I am applying uh, a lot of action then I dry up the brush the number 20 flat brush and I also use the um, the tissue to remove a little bit of the dark pigments and here I want to make them uh, fade away in the uh, far distance and here for the lower part I'm also applying pines gray and I'm splashing pines gray around so now it appears that the the bird is uh, well splashing around or something he is in uh, somewhat more of the wilderness and this is the Prussian blue again an extra layer you can see the water uh, is dripping down from uh, the angle of uh, the paper that I'm, ha I'm having it in. I always, I always uh, make sure that the, uh, the wooden plate where my paper is upon, that it's in a slight angle so that the pigments can move around as good as possible. Just a slight angle is enough already. I will demonstrate that also. Now the markings on the head uh, are quite dark, so I'm applying a second layer here for the markings. And you can see that uh, here 
on the top I've uh, wetted the paper again and I'm applying the brush uh, the the pines gray again because also here for the far uh, background I want some action there so I simply uh, dot in a little bit of the pigments of the pines gray to see what that does for my uh, background and what you can also do is uh, take uh, a spray can just uh, put water in it and then you can uh, add extra water on your paper and you can shift the pigments around I hear I'm tilting the wooden plate and you can see the actual pigments going upwards and that is where I want to have them I'll just let them settle now here is the gouache paint again it's uh, simply white and I just take it from the tube and then um, I can put in some strokes uh, little lines there with the rigor again so that I can put in a little bit more action into uh, the wing area and I also want to use it to brighten up some of the feathers that are on the breast so um, yeah I think um, working with gouache together with the water paint can uh, give uh, uh, well quite a brilliant effect actually and on the head itself uh, the white I uh, put in a little bit of uh, Naples yellow so it's not all that white anymore except for on top of the nose and here for uh, the foreground I'm using uh, the white gouache to get some uh, action going on and I also I also always make sure that I put the, the, the cap up again and here I'm splashing the white gouache around and I also want to splash around a little bit of that pines gray and then I can just let that dry and then my watercolor painting is finished once it's dry I can uh, remove the tape that I've put around it so here it is my Rembrandt paint and the white gouache and uh, wow well, this is the the end result I really loved making this watercolor painting and maybe I will uh, well see you on my patreon page or otherwise I will meet you again in uh, here on the YouTube of course so thank you for watching take care and I'll see you next time